I still from time to time get questions about do I need to export PostScript file from InDesign to make a PDF and drop it on Distiller? No, no you don't. You can use the export feature directly from InDesign. There's nothing wrong with it. You won't get in trouble. You still get to go to heaven if you use the export feature from InDesign. We're going to have a look at what each of the export options mean. So direct from InDesign, what does it change about your artwork? Which one should you use for what particular task? And we're also going to look at the new background tasks panel in InDesign CS5. I think a very useful episode of Creative Suite TV. Let me know what you think. www.creativesuitetv.com Well, I'm working on this awesome layout and I need to point out a couple of things. First, the background tasks panel. This is brand new in CS5. So if I go to window, uh, if you have a look under utilities, that's where you'll find background tasks. So it's window, utilities, background tasks, and this panel will come out, there'll be nothing in it. We're talking about creating PDF files though, and we'll come back to this uh, in just a little bit. Now the old school way of doing it, and I'm saying old school, is print. Okay, so you go file, print, or command or control P, bring up the print dialog, which we got here, and then you would choose something like a postscript file, and then you'd choose, uh, say, a device independent postscript file, something like that. You'd make a, a, a P .ps file, you'd drop it onto the Acrobat distiller, Choose your job options. Man, that will still work, but it is so old school and fraught with peril. Don't do it that way, okay? Much easier way. There's no reason why you need to do that. Use the direct export from InDesign. I'm using InDesign CS5. It's perfectly okay to do this. File menu. Use one of the Adobe PDF presets to start, or you can go directly to the export and choose PDF. It's the same thing. So you can go and choose one of these presets if you want to, or you can make your own preset depending on what you need to do, and you can define it and save it, okay? We're going to use the export function here, and I'll just put it on the desktop. I'm going to choose Adobe PDF, okay? Save, and then it's going to bring up the options. I'm going to point out a couple of the options here and what the differences are. At first glance, you'll have a look and you go, okay, what's the difference between high quality print and press quality? What's the difference between PDFX settings and the smallest file size? So A, smallest file size resamples your images so they're low resolution, converts things to RGB so it's a smaller file size and compresses things a lot more. That's under the compression tab. Okay, there you go, down to 100 pixels per inch and so on. Compatibility is set at 6. If we come up to high quality print, now we see the compression is set to 300 pixels per inch, okay, and the output is set to no color conversion. So why is that true? Okay, high quality print assumes that you might be printing, say, to an electronic type printer like a Fuji Xerox, for an example, okay. Now those Xerox machines work best if you leave your photographs as RGB, okay, with a color profile attached. So RGB and CMYK, so your black text can stay CMYK, um, your logos can stay CMYK, but your images get converted or stay as RGB and then they, they print better that way. High quality print, think of that as electronic print or e-printing. Okay. If you then go to, say, a press quality, what this does is converts to CMYK. Okay, so it does convert to CMYK. All right. The big difference, I think, though, is if you are going to print or you are going to press, I would choose PDFX 1A because it, it creates a color profiled image any RGB goes over to CMYK, providing you want to do that, okay? Compression, 
300 pixels per inch industry standard for image compression image quality is set to maximum now the really important thing here is okay compatibility is set to acrobat 4 so if we go to the advanced tab what that really means is that invokes the transparency flattener so if you're going to make a PDF a high quality PDF and the transparency needs to be flattened choose this one Acrobat 4 does not understand transparency so therefore it needs to be flattened and the default setting is high resolution okay if we then go to one of the other PDFX settings okay so let's say go to this its compatibility is set to Acrobat 5 therefore it doesn't need to be flattened so we're creating a transparent PDF all right so there you go high quality print um, doesn't need to be flattened PDFX 1a does press quality does not each of those settings are all 300 pixels per inch as well so that gives you a bit of an overview of what the difference is okay high quality print doesn't change the colors PDFX 1a and press quality do okay uh, to CMYK and there is a difference on the compatibility talk to your printer about it if you're not sure what settings to use that's exactly uh, what I would do you know and do you need to include marks and bleeds and all the rest of it onto there and finally we're going to choose PDFX 1A I'm going to go ahead and hit export uh, there's overset text I don't care we press OK and it's finished you know why because the background tasks panel over here is exporting the PDF I don't need to wait I can just get on with work I can change things and it's going to export in the background so I can continue work and make some changes and all the rest of it that is the background tasks and that's how you should be exporting PDFs from InDesign okay.